Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, since November, I have been filming a vlog trying to get through the entire Throne of Glass series. And boy, do I tell you, it has been such a struggle. I naively thought I could get through the whole series in that month, and then maybe potentially it would dip into December. And here we are, the middle of March, and I have finally finished. It has been, it's been some time, but yeah, I have some thoughts on it, obviously. I have all of the books here, all of the books here, and they are so heavy. Um, and you can see I've tapped some, you know, not huge amount on some of them. I know that there are a million other videos of people reading the Throne of Glass series and doing little vlogs. I decided to do it myself. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have because this book series definitely uh, got me into the worst reading slump ever back in January and I finally got out of it in February and then I was like, oh gosh, do I really want to get back into the series? And I did officially put the last three books on my uh, March TBR and I have done it now. I have finished it and it has felt like such a chore. But at the same time, I have rated these books pretty high. I would say, I mean, let's let's watch the video. I'll come back with my final thoughts. But yeah, I have like an average rating I would give the whole entire series. But there are some books that I've rated higher than others. And it's not like I've hated it. There's just, there's just, there's, ah. Oh. Anyway, let's get into it. There is um, multiple novellas, I guess, grouped inside this book. I don't really know why we need this. I guess it's a backstory to whatever the Throne of Glass plot is, but we're following an assassin called Selena and she's only 16 years old, nearly 17, but straight away I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so young. Why am I reading about a 16 year old? The first novella is like all about this pirate and he's handsome and I'm just thinking, oh no, where is this going? But it didn't go there, but I was I was a little bit worried it was going to be like even um, her sort of somewhat colleague slash friend, Sam, who is I think a year older than her. He was like, you know, he's like 12 years older than you, like because she makes a joke about, you know, hitting on him. And stuff. I think I would prefer it if she were 18, at least with what she's been saying and doing. But I guess the point is like she is an assassin at a very young age. She's really good. And there is this whole assassin sort of um, group or collective. There's the king of the assassins. So anyway, whatever. So, so we're, we follow Selena, and in the first novella, she um, they're like at this pirate bay area, and basically she frees a bunch of slaves, which, and and that obviously goes against her boss's wishes because he wants to buy some slaves but we're also not entirely sure like why he wants to buy some slaves um but i thought that was pretty good the second one was shorter the second one was about her and a healer which is a girl called irene or something i think that's her or Irene, something like that and she works at a bar but she wants to be a healer but she kind of got stuck in this dead end village and um selena ends up beating up some guys for her leaving her some money and and then going on her merry way i, I actually got into it i did like it i started tabbing it i have finished this book the assassin's blade and you know what I know I said like why do we have all these novellas but I do kind of see the reason why if you love the story of Throne of the Glass which I haven't even read so I don't know what happens this was included to have like a backstory to Selena I don't know I'm just talking out my butt right now I don't really know what I'm saying but I finished this there are a few novellas in here that I th thought were decent and then a few that I did feel like why are they in here? So I do have that kind of sense of why am I reading about these characters when they just appear on a few pages and then they disappear. I imagine that they'll be in the main series. So I'm gonna start reading the main series today. Guys, it's like a few days later. I honestly don't know what I said in my last vlog, um, but I have been reading quite a bit of Throne of Glass. So I think that I don't even think that I told you that I finished this, but if I did, then I did. I, yeah, I finished this. I gave it a, uh, I think I gave this a four star, because I obviously read this one first. I gave this a three star. I think this one was better, but still not like amazing, but I still gave it a four star because I enjoyed it. 
I've also, since that, since reading that, I've also read Crown of Midnight. I read this in two days. I read this super, super quick. I really enjoyed the first half of it. The second half is a little bit more of like action and stuff. And I actually tabbed a lot less in the second half, which is fine. It just, it's, there's a lot more like story progress in here, but I didn't feel like I needed to tab anything. The first part of the book, I felt more like, oh, it's so cute. It was more of the romance. And I tabbed quite about a lot of that because obviously there's this huge love triangle in this book, which I had no idea that there would be such a huge love triangle. However, uh, I finished this. And I gave this, I did round it up on Goodreads, I gave it a five star, but I think this is more than four and a half because I, I did enjoy it more than Throne of Glass, but I still felt like it wasn't perfect or there was um, parts of it where I, I wasn't liking the actions that Selena took. And, you know, some of her decisions or reactions to things were not what I would do. And also her going back and forth between Dorian and Chal. I don't really know how you say his name. I think it's Chal. She flip-flops between the two and she flirts tremendously with Dorian when she shouldn't. I just feel like it's, it's I don't know, she's a little inappropriate. Her and Chal's sort of relationship dynamic developed more in this book. And I think that's why I enjoyed like the first part of the book, like the first half. And then obviously whatever happens happens, I don't want to spoil it, kind of goes in a different direction. And then I started reading Hair of Fire last night. I'm only on page 31, so yeah, just <laughs> not even scrape the, the bottom of this because this is over 500 pages long. It is a real chunky book and there is a new love interest, I believe. So it's not even like a triangle, it's like a love foursome or whatever I don't even know what it is but there's this new guy called Rowan that we're introduced to and she's in this new continent um but we do flip between her and then back to Chal in the old continent so you know I I don't want to like completely dismiss Chal but I also I also think that he's probably not the main love interest and the books keep getting bigger and bigger this one is 565 pages and the next one is bigger and then I think the next two are even bigger than that so yeah quite a lot of pages to go through it is the middle of December uh, so it's been like a week since you last saw me I have been reading Air of Fire and I have been enjoying it but I have been very slow on reading it. I actually didn't really read it for like a good five days and then I picked it up, uh, I think it was yesterday and the day before and I read a good chunk. So the last time you saw me, I was really early on in the book and now I am on page 397. So I only have this left. I do plan to finish it tonight. Now, I don't wanna go into too many spoilers, but what I'm thinking so far is that Rowan, who is the Fae, who's like training her in this book to unleash her magical powers, I think that he is her mate because there's been a lot of references in this book, none of the other ones about mates like there are in Akatar. And I really feel like he is her mate, but he, and he knows that, but he hasn't told her that. And I think he has treated her so badly throughout the book and like been nasty to her and everything because he knows that and he, and he doesn't want he doesn't want it to be true because he has some trauma and like some some sadness from his past of, of losing his mate um, like to hundred years ago or whatever. So he's quite old. And bear in mind, Selena is only 19 years old. So there's that. But regardless of it, there is a lot of build up in this book. Um, really not much has happened. It's just, there's a lot of things happening in the background. You are jumping from one character to the other. There's characters all over the world. We still go back to Dorian, we go back to Charl, we're at Selina and Rowan's camp, which is like on a different continent. And then also we're introduced to the Iron Teeth Witches and the Yellow Fang Witches, or I think they're Yellow Fang, I'm not entirely sure. The, the basically the witch clang. And there's a lot of dragon, riding and training and if you like dragons like there's kind of it's like you know there's like definitely a lot more of that in here whereas the other books didn't have any of that so there's a lot more in here that you're introduced to and then also um the last part that I just read which was 
back where Chal is, which is like Ardalan Kingdom or whatever. I, I know I'm I'm mixing up all the words, but it's just there's so many places in this book I'm like trying to keep track. I know there is a map, but anyway, so he um, is talking to Selena's cousin going against the king and stuff. Like there's a lot of politics in play with this book, but what happened was in the novella, Assassin's Blade, that first novella about the pirates, he is spoken about in this book. So now I'm doing like a, a 180 or 360. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I know who that who they're talking about. So there's a lot of references with that. I'm still waiting for the reference to the healer because in the no in, there's one novella about a healer. Like we had all the information about the desert ninjas. I want to say ninjas, assassins <laughs> in one of the novellas, and that's already like been spoken about in the last um, like the Throne of Glass and and the other book, but but we haven't really gone into the healers yet. And I'm waiting for that because there was that one girl who was a healer and I don't think she's been referenced. And they did go to the healer sanctuary in this book. And I thought she was gonna be spoken about then, but she wasn't. So I don't know when that's gonna pop up. It does seem like it's building up to a little bit, but it's not gonna be um, significant to the story. I don't think it's just gonna be a little battle. And then I I do suspect that that Rowan is her mate. And I do think we'll find out in this book. It's just like heartbreaking, the ending of this book. When it comes to Dorian and like what happens and everything. And he doesn't deserve that. He doesn't deserve that to happen. He is a nice person. He's a nice prince and um, a little bit of a weakling, like a weak character. And he waits too long to really like take action. But I can't blame him for what happened. It's just horrible. That's just horrible. So I, 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 you know, like it was good in the book, but oh, not very nice. Anyway, so I started reading the uh, Queen of Shadows, the book after, and I'm on page 201. So I've read, uh, you know, a big chunk, but it's a big book, another big book. And oh my gosh, her and Chal hate each other. And I'm just kind of upset about it because I would have thought that, okay, so Selena or Aileen, Aileen? I don't know how you say her name. I prefer Selena. I think she should keep that name, but obviously she has she has become who she really is, the rightful heir of Terrasan, and she is Aileen, blah, 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 whatever her long title is. She has come back to Ardalan. I think it's Ardalan Kingdom. I think that's what it is. There's so many, so many names in this and like places that will sound very similar in this book. Anyway, she's come back and she has learned what's happened to Dorian and uh, knows that her cousin is on trial and going to be executed in two days. And so she has a plot and everything and she gets reacquainted with Chal, who now has a friend who is a girl who works with him. And there's a little bit of a love interest there or something going on where you kind of you find out that they hooked up like a year ago or something. Anyway, before he ended up with Selena, right? But still, it's like, okay, fine, whatever. And her and Chal hate each other. They are so nasty to each other. And I just, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I don't like it. I, I, I think Chal was a really nice person, a nice character. And I don't think he would have been so nasty to her had she come back and he wouldn't have blamed her for everything like he is. So I feel like Sarah J Mass is really trying to make me hate him. I, I think at the end of the day, I'm hating Selena more than anything and also Sarah J Mass. <laughs> because why are they destroying all the male characters? This is supposed to be a romantic series. I don't know. Like, who is Selena supposed to end up with? Rowan, who's her cousin? I mean, that's probably what's gonna happen. She has another cousin. Like, wh is, what kind of cousin is this? Is this like a cousin third time removed? Or is it like a proper, proper cousin? I'm not, <laughs> not sure. Maybe Rowan hasn't even been in the story. Like, she, she like, you know, she got him freed from Maeve, who is her, her aunt. And um, now he's no longer like tied to her for the rest of his life, but he's he's made an oath to be with Selena for the rest of his life and obey her commands and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, no, don't do this to me. But she accepted. Anyway, whatever. 
he hasn't been in the book at all. And again, this is the same things happening in this book where we're jumping from different story to different story, POV, etc. And every time we get to the witches, I just shut off. I just find it really, really boring. I mean, it is all gonna tie together. So I am kind of like skim reading it and like, you know, making sure I'm trying to read the parts in those chapters at least that I that kind of uh jump out from the page that oh maybe I should read this little snippet you know but otherwise there's so much about nonsense that I just feel like these books could have been really edited down I don't see why they're so long really just thinking about it I think this one didn't need to be as long as it was there were parts in this book that I enjoyed I like all the the you know the horrible like Val, Val demons and other demons that were in the forest that like the skinwalkers and stuff I thought that was all interesting in here but there were so many chapters that uh was just a little bit dull anyway so yeah reading this one I I kind of feel the same way I feel like it's just too long a little bit dull some parts and I'm not happy with what they've done with her and Charles relationship or lack of now and it just seems like we've done a 180 it's you know, I can, like, when it happened with A Court of Thorn and Roses, like, I, I did not like Tamlin. So it made complete sense. Like, he was a doormat. And, you know, in some ways, Charles was a little bit of a, that type of character where he didn't really have much of a personality. But I think, I, I felt, I didn't feel like his flaws were anything like other books, you know, uh, with um, Akatar, right? I, I keep re referencing to that, but that's like the only other series I've read from Sergio Mass, and it just feels like there's so many similarities. I really don't know why Selena still hates him so much, because I don't think what he did in the second book was that awful. I really don't. Does anyone else agree? Like, Charles, yes, didn't tell her one thing uh, that ended up backfiring I guess but he also didn't do it purposely or maliciously and she forgave Dorian really fast for just you know and Dorian that's his father who's doing who's committing all these crimes and Dorian's more of a doormat he hasn't done much at all and you know hiding all his magic and stuff and and I just feel like Charles is just a loyal decent human being and he do he doesn't have the magic so she almost like hates him for that and he now hates her for having the magic and being fae and it just seems like it's a little it feels like it's being forced on me that they really like despise each other or they can't see eye to eye Okay, so it is the 24th of December. I am wearing a Christmas jumper. It is, it's a Christmas jumper with a twist. I have a story behind it. I, I, I'm not a smoker, <laughs> but my dad got this for me, not realizing what it was. But anyway, I'm, I'm in my Christmas mode. But an update on where I am with Throne of Glass because I have finished Air of Fire and I've also finished Queen of Shadows. I don't recall if I spoke about this, Maybe not, but anyway, I uh, finished this Queen of Shadows. Um, oh yeah, maybe I did speak about this. I'm not entirely sure, but this one was fine. I gave it four stars. I thought it was just fine. I actually preferred Queen of Shadows more than Air of Fire. I feel like they're very similar books. They're still, you know, this was definitely like a filler book, and I think you could have condensed quite a lot of it down. This book still had all of the different parts of the story but you got a lot more in depth with the witches and what was really going on with them and I got way more invested in that story as opposed to when it was in this one I just couldn't care less. A lot happens in this book. Um, parts that I'm not super satisfied with and then other parts that I do think were pretty good. I mean, I didn't tell actually too much. I think towards the end, I think this book also has the same issue where it's just too long and it doesn't need to be as long as it is. So that I will give it four stars. I don't think it's a four and a half. I, uh, even though I did kind of enjoy it more than Air of Fire. Air of Fire, I just felt like there were so many parts of it that I just didn't care about. This one, I kind of read everything and enjoyed everything. Didn't really skip the witchy parts which is fine, so <laughs> at least that's good. And uh, yeah, now I need, go, need to go on to the next one, but I haven't started it. 
So I'm on page 61. And I, I think I'm just tired. I'm tired of these characters. I'm tired of the storyline. I'm not really that invested in the romance at all. I do not like the romance between Rowan and Aelin. I do not like it. I just don't like Aelin. I think that's the problem that I have. She's just too obnoxious. She's too full of herself. She's too prideful and I think, yeah, if you're going to be like the best assassin in the world and also the queen of, you know, like, the, that's going to save everybody and whatnot and a super powerful fae, you would probably have a lot of pride and you'd be very cocky and confident and whatnot. I mean, I get that, but I, I don't like her. I just don't care. And I'm struggling to think about reading this book and then two more that are even bigger than this. As you can see, I am almost at the finale. I have finished Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. This was a long, this was a chore, I swear. This was such a chore. I'm gonna read them in tandem because I've seen a lot of people say that's the best way to do it. And I kind of understand because obviously this follows Chal and Nezarin and then this follows the other side with all the other characters. This has taken me longer than I expected to get to this point. But after finishing Empire of Storms, let's talk about this. I finished Empire of Storms a few days ago and I had to take a step back and just really think about what it is that I like about this and what it is that I don't like about this. Because for the majority of the reading experience, I was thinking this is gonna be a three, I don't really like this, why am I still reading this series? And then I finished it and I gave it a four because ultimately, like I can't rate it lower than a four. I don't know what happens. While I was reading this book, I was thinking this, the way that she's writing this story is so annoying. And the way that she writes her sentences, she meaning Sarah J Maas, it is so annoying. It's getting, it's getting on my nerves, the way that she does her short little sentences and then she does a little inner monologue of whoever I'm following in the POV and, I'm just getting a little annoyed with how she's writing it, but I, I like the story and this one is, is a lot steamier than any of the other Throne of Glass books. I mean, maybe the second one, Queen of Shadows, had a little bit of steam, but this one, there's like couples getting it on everywhere. At some point, when you pass the midway point of the book, it's just like back to back, this POV, they're getting it on, this POV, you know, I... <laughs> Whatever, maybe that's why I'm rating it a four. It finally got interesting for me, I don't know. The characters that I like the most and the actual like storyline that I like the most, which I don't even know if I'm supposed to like them, is actually Lorcan and Elid. I think that's how you say their names. I like Lorcan. I know he's like a baddie or he's like the bad guy. You're not supposed to like him, blah, 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 blah. But I actually liked him in this book. I thought everyone else was just a wet, wet boy. I just, I wasn't, I didn't care about anyone else. I really don't care about Aelin and Rome, Rowan. I just don't like them. Anyway, so we're gonna read the final two books of the series. So technically I'm supposed to read Tower of Dawn next, which follows Chal and Nezarin. Chal was uh, Selena's love interest back in book two. But he, he's been missing in action for a whole book now. And obviously, you know, he was ditched like many books ago. So I've always liked Chal. Oh, Chal, oh, I saw someone actually say his name. Is it Carl? Carl? Carl. Somebody said his name, I think it was on TikTok or something. Or I, I heard someone say his name properly. And I was like, oh, I've been saying it completely wrong. And now I've forgotten how to say his name. I call him Chal. I know that's not how you say his name, but it's just, in my brain, that's his name. Anyway, so we follow him and Nezrin. Obviously, it's gonna be a love story. Him and Nezrin have a past and they've gone on their little quest together to try to bring forth some troops for the war. And So that's what this book is. And then, like I said, this follows Aelin. She's been locked up. I kind of liked, I kind of liked how what happened in Empire Storms, but I also didn't like it. I, I just, I think I've had an actual issue with the writing of that book in particular. And I think I'm just getting really sick and tired of how long these books are because I do think there's a lot of filler in each of these books. And looking at this one, 
this is a tomb this is huge <laughs> this one is the biggest of them all this is almost a thousand pages oh my goodness and then this one i think is a little smaller so you know a little smaller but what is it gonna be like 700 650 okay so the empire of storms was like 600 just under 700 so this is basically another empire of storms plus i'm gonna read this at the same time all right a little snippet here because i actually was just about to read a little bit of tower of dawn I'm on my lunch break and i just opened it up and it has a new map and i have been thinking for majority of these books i've wanted to have a new map to look at because when Oh, maybe correct me if I'm wrong but when Aileen met Rowan wasn't that a completely different continent and it wasn't in the map and I just I found it confusing like where they actually were so we have a new map which is really fun to see so I just thought I'd, I'd jump in here but yeah this is the southern continent oh, okay so one of the novellas Selena when she was Selena back as an assassin it's like all about a healer and, and Charles just mentioned that he wants to find a healer in the Tower of Sesame who could discover some way of getting him walking again. I bet you it's the same healer that's in Assassin's Play because up until this point all of the other novellas have like appeared in the other books but we still have not found that healer and I've been wondering like what is going on with the healer and I thought that I thought we were gonna meet her back when uh what was it Air of Fire because there was like some dialogue about seeing healers and stuff, but she wasn't in that. So it seems like she might be in this book. So it's been several days since I last spoke to you, but I barely read anything of these two. I'm still trying to do the tandem thing, but I swear I have like completely spoiled this book for myself, which is the technically the, the one I should be reading, which is Tower of Dawn, where you follow Chal and Nezrin, because, <sighs> Okay, this is the thing. I, I I probably am doing this wrong, but I was like, I'll read a little bit more of this because this one's a little bit shorter. So last night I got to page uh, 92 and basically Chal and Nezrin or Kal or whatever his name is, they are in, they're staying at this palace and there's some like royal sort of issues with um, the siblings of the king or he's not even a king he's a kagan or whatever anyway so there's like some political drama going on and they're like in the center of it now and and he's also just met the healer which i was right it is the healer from the novella so woohoo we finally have all the characters now from the novellas appear in the books so i thought that was cool but anyway um and she absolutely hates him because he, she sees him as part of the issue um and part of the people who basically destroyed her hometown, her life, and her family, and everything, even though he technically didn't, but he was, he's from Ardalan, so there's gonna be, like, this rival, and anyway, so I continue reading this one, and this one, I'm on page 100, um, because I just pushed through, but on, which chapter is it? One of the chapters, it's chapter 6, page 65, so I got to this, last night and I saw Charles name and I was like oh should I read it and then I kind of started I, I literally like flipped the page and I saw the spoiler like that whole chapter basically sums up this book in just a few paragraphs <laughs> so now I'm thinking do I need to read this book because I kind of know exactly what happens and it's completely spoiled the book for me uh, so maybe you're supposed to only read these in tandem when you reread the story, not when you're reading it for the first time. Oh my gosh. So I completely like, I, I know exactly what happens. I know what happens with Charles and Nezrin. I know what happens with the siblings. If there's a Volg and I, you know, cause they're, they're thinking, they think there's a spy or like a Volg spy in the kingdom. And I know who it is because it's all in that one little chapter and the chapter is so short. And I was just kept reading. I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> now I know what happens in Tower of Dawn. Should I even read Tower of Dawn? So I kept reading because I was honestly I'm more interested in this story than I am of that one because it's just so separate from the story. It literally is its own. This could be like its own separate book because it really just follows them. And as interesting as that might be, um, you know, I've invested so much time in the main story. And so I I pushed through and I read like 200 pages 
on this one, which is up to chapter 10. So, you know, only 10% of the way. So there's still lots to read there. And this one, yeah, I'm on page two. So I'm like, you know, I need to read a little bit more of this one to catch up. But yeah, so I just wanted to throw it out there. If you haven't read this series, don't read these two in tandem because by the time that you get to chapter six, it spoils the whole of Tower of Dawn. It is a few days later. I am made a really big progress with Tower of Dawn, but I have to tell you, I am the dumbest person. I mean, maybe not. I just didn't realize. So this whole video, I was supposed to be reading these in tandem, but as I told you, I think in my last clip, like Chaw appears in here and then you find out what happens in here straight away. And I saw that actually these two books you're supposed to read in tandem, which I've already read Empire Storms. So I really should have read these two books together and then I could have gone to Kingdom of Ash and I wouldn't have spoiled <laughs> the book for me because I'm on, I'm like three, two thirds of the way in. Three, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, 465, page 465. And we just found out like what's happening in Skulls Bay, which is something that happens in Empire of Storms. So regardless of that, I do find that I am skimming quite a lot of the Nezrin storyline in this because I don't care. So she goes off with Sartok and, and she, and then they encounter the Volg spiders and I mean, I already, like, know about the bold spiders from Kingdom of Mash, so, you know, I feel like I'm just like, yes, I know, yes, I know, but it's fine. I think uh, they've also met another shapeshifter, which appeared in one of the books in Assassin's Blade, so he's the one who Selena stole the silk from. Regardless, um, he is trying to get back 20 years of his life that was stolen. I'm wondering, because if he's a shapeshifter, I wonder if he's gonna get with Lysandra since um, Adian is such an asshole. Like in Kingdom of Ash, he doesn't want anything to do with her and I don't think she did anything bad. Like she just followed her queen's advice and I, I really think that these men need to get over themselves because they hold grudges like nothing and it really is pissing me off. But anyway, so I'm almost done with this. I was just too tired to finish up. I have a third of it left and yeah, super excited to finish this and I really want to finish Kingdom of Ash in the next few days because there's other books that I want to read this month and I feel like this is just taking me too long. So this one I'm on page 311 so I have like made a little bit, a fair amount of a dent. Yeah, it is uh, a huge book but I'm actually invested. I feel like this one's a little bit of a struggle. I'm kind of just reading it for the Kale. I know his name is Kale now. I know I call him Chal, but his name is Kale. I think it is. I'm kind of invested in the Kale and Irina love story. I, I was, I was kind of starting to think, why does everyone need a love interest in Sarah J. Mass books? Like literally, everyone is paired off at this point. But at the same time, I do think it's really sweet what's going on. So. I don't know, I think I'll probably rate this book lower than all the rest of the other books because a book in itself, I just think it could have been like its own novella and not a 600 and whatever page book it is. Okay, so I have finally finished Tower of Dawn. It is, has been a, it's been a couple days since I finished it. I just wanted to kind of sit on it, think about what I ultimately feel about this book. I still haven't finished Kingdom of Ash, but I'm really close. I'm on page. 532 so I have a little less than half the book left and I'm so ready to get this <laughs> this series done I actually want to finish this it's like 400 pages that I have to read so I have to bear that in mind but I want to finish it today so I'm going to see if I can read all of it today but yeah Tower of Dawn I think I said this in a different clip but I feel like this just could have been a novella there were some things that happened in this book where they're like revelations and I was sitting outside a couple days ago during my lunch and I was like oh shit and my partner's like what happened and I was like no no it's just the book because I literally said out loud oh shit like because there is something that happens it kind of explains a character in the series that up until now you know they've been there but there's like this whole backstory behind them and more backstory behind all of the demons and like the Balg demons and all of that. So 
don't want to spoil anything if you have not read the series. I think what I'm ultimately going to give this is a four, but I think it's probably a three and a half, but I do tend to either round up or down on Goodreads because obviously you can't give half a point. And I don't think it's a three star. I just think it's, you know, yes, what you may find out is necessary, um, but I don't feel like everyone, I think I said this already, but I don't feel like everyone in these series needs to be paired off. They're like, not everyone needs a romance story. And there's like so many. We have Aelin and Rowan. We have Chad and Irene. We have Nezrin and Sartok. We have Lorcan and Elid. Um, am I missing anyone? I mean, that's already four. No, we have Dorian and, uh, Dorian and, um, Manon. And then we have Lysandra and Adian. So that's six couples six couples in these books and we're jumping between different POVs of all of the different groups and I have to keep up with six different romances. It's a little bit much. It's a little extreme. I really don't care about Aileen and Rowan so maybe Sarah J Mass wanted to add in some other romance stories because she knew those characters were a little weak. Like I just think they're weak. I think they're a weak like duo. I really don't care for them. So I really like Dorian. I think he is far more interesting of a character. Honestly, him and Chad were far more, Chal, not Chad. Why am I saying Chad? Kale, his name is Kale. I, I, I don't know how to say that name. Anyway, I always thought they were more interesting than Selena slash Aileen, but regardless of that, I do think him and uh, Dorian and Manon are interesting because Manon is interesting too. And there's like more darkness behind their affair, but I don't know. Anyway, so, I am in Kingdom of Ash and obviously we're leading up to the finale. I am skimming a lot of dialogue or a lot of paragraphs that are just boring or just repeat. Like Sarah J Mass just tends to do that. She does add a lot of filler pages and I don't know why. I, I, I really feel like she needs to be edited down more and none of these books that have got to like the 600 page mark or more have needed to be 600 pages or more and I really do feel like it's just, uh, it should be quality over quantity. And I think at this rate, it's been definitely quantity over quality. Okay, so before I get into my final thoughts, let's just talk about Kingdom of Ash. I did finish this a few days ago. And I have to say, this ended up being really boring. I don't know what happened, but you know, as a finale of like an epic series, and I was expecting this huge, enormous battle. And then at the end, you know, she loses her power. I'm just like, what? What? This is how you want to end your series. I uh, just felt a little bit disappointed in it and just kind of deflated. I was like, mm, okay, is that really what's gonna happen? You know, I was expecting at least some epic battle and I don't feel like there was. And this was almost a thousand pages. I feel like it could have been 300 pages and then we're good. So <laughs> that's kind of how I felt. Oh, also, I only tabbed the Dorian parts, a parts that I like. They were all Dorian. I, I liked him in this book. Everyone else, I couldn't care less about, so. Okay, so if I had to rate the series, as a whole, I would probably end up at a 3.5 slash 4 because the majority of these books did receive a 4 star. Some of them did get 3.5 and, and I bumped it up to a 4 star. There was really only a couple that were true 4 stars and then one 4.5 which I did bump up to a 5. And honestly, if I had to reread this series, like would I actually reread the series? I think I would only read the first four books, if I had to, because I do think they're the best, which would be The Throne of Glass, Queen of Shadows, Air of Fire, and Crown of Midnight. Because I think also this book ends with her destroying the king, and I just feel like that would have just been a nice little cohesive story. I do think, I do think, no, I know we had this one, which is fine, but it's that's the novellas. The last three books were such a <laughs> I knew I knew I was gonna drop something. The last three books were such a slog to get through, and I tell you what, I did end up getting a massive reading slump in January when I was trying to read this book. I just felt like it was too much. 
even though Empire Storms at the end of the day was kind of good, I did rate it a four. Then we have Tower Dawn, which was just so like, ugh. And then Kingdom of Ash was just, I think, just, I think they all sort of let down the rest of the series. Also, as I've mentioned multiple times, I don't care about Aileen and I don't care about Rowan. I don't care about their relationship. And so whenever it was her battling her inner demons at the end and I just didn't care. And all the thing about the mate and, and how, he, you know, she didn't tell him. And is it okay that she's her mate even though he had another mate that he thought was her mate? I just think that whole thing was silly. It was silly. It didn't need to happen. Like, who cares? You guys love each other. Who cares, right? And, um... Aside from that, I think ultimately what I realized is I don't like the way that these books were written and it became glaringly obvious that that was the real issue that I had with this series in, in like total. I think the first few books were fine and I didn't notice them as much but I do feel like, I've said this multiple times, these books didn't need to be as long as they were. Sarah Jimass repeats herself over and over again. I feel like I'm her because I'm repeating myself over and over again. But she just repeated everything. And she went back to all the different relationships for little snippets of what's going on. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't care. Like, this is not advancing the plot. This is boring. I don't care what's happening with Adi and Lysandra for the hundredth time. Yes, they hate each other all and finally he's like, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. The only interesting thing was Dorian and Manon and their relationship with Dorian going off and trying to steal the key. And you know, that was interesting. And him with Maeve at the end, that got me too. I was like, is he going to the dark side? I was kind of like, yeah, go to the dark side. Like, that's kind of what I was hoping for. And then him and Aileen would fight and battle. Like, that That would be, that would have been the story that would have been more maybe upsetting to fans. But I think it would have been interesting and it would have been a risk for uh, Sarah J Mass to do. I just felt like not, these books ended very uh, easy and there wasn't much of a risk and hardly anyone died. So I know I've said multiple other things in this video in total but I just can't think right now because my brain has turned to smush. So if you've read the series and you feel the same way as me let me know. Otherwise thanks for stopping by and if you made it this long thank you so much and yeah I will see you all in another video. Thanks bye.